Hello, welcome back to episode 2 of Fairview Zoo. So in the last episode we started off with the entrance and again, it's not finished. I've got a long way to go before this suit is going to be finished. Um, there will be some episodes where I just go back and fill in a few, episodes, a few bits of details. But here you can see me um, starting out the layout for the pathing and um, building in something from a zoo which I've got near me. You come straight in through the entrance and there's a, um, I think it's a gibbon enclosure, obviously we don't have gibbons in the game, um, but we do have lemurs. Well, I don't think we've got gibbons, I haven't actually checked, um, but we've got le lemurs, um, so I've made a nice, well, I, th I think it's nice, um, a nice enclosure for the lemurs. So here you can see I'm just making some sort of fence for it, um, a little bit fiddly with the, the mesh, um, but yeah, so this is going to be their, their indoor enclosure. And then I will also have an outdoor enclosure afterwards. And yet here you can see that they're not quite aligned perfectly. So I have had to make a few changes, moving things in and out a little bit. Um, as I mentioned before, I want all of my builds to sort of be semi-realistic. So um, each one will have a keeper's hut nearby, a sort of an indoor area where they'd be able to go in and get some proper shelter from the rain, especially being in the UK. Um, you get a lot of rain and sometimes some snow, as you'll see a little bit later on. Um, snow in June, I think it was, which is interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, so here I am building, which will be the um, the sort of the indoor area for them, which will also have the staff entrance for them. Um, so this is where the, the staff will come in, just through the doorway. I put the habitat gate on there, um, and I decide actually I want some sort of concrete material just because I think it looks a little bit different to the bricks and I think the bricks across the whole zoo would be a bit much so I'm going to change up the concrete, change up a few things here and there um, but yeah I do really like this. Um, I also play around trying to find some windows to add. Um, I quite like these in the end so I add some of these in um, just to make it look a little bit more like an actual building um, and then yeah that's the indoor area done, so now I'm just working on the um, I'm building the actual enclosure. So I do go for a modular shape, a nice square shape, um, just because I just think it fits easier. Um, it's a lot easier to deal with and I just think it actually looks really nice as well. Um, again, slightly high off the ground, I'm not quite sure what's going on with that, so I do need to figure that out. But I do sink it down to the ground a little bit, hoping that should work. So yeah, again, as I mentioned, I do want to have a staff area and everyone, but for some reason it kept causing lots of issues with the ground. Um, not quite sure why. Sink, lifted it, sink, sunk it down a bit. But yeah, and then I realised I had to remove the path for it to work. Um, so I did that, put that in, and it happened again. So I made sure it was flat, and then I just realised that the easiest thing would be just take the hit and then redo the path. Um, so yeah. Um, putting a wall and keep it out to make it seem fit the fit the, um, fit the animal enclosure better. Uh, sorry, I struggled with struggled with English then. Um, so yeah, I did that to make it seem a little bit nicer. And then here I am getting started on the roof. Um, I wanted to have it sort of a mesh roof as well, so that the animals, the lemurs, could climb up onto the roof if they wanted to. Um, basically, I mean, they, they don't, they wouldn't, but it just extends the um, area, their climbable area as well. If, if this is climbable in real life, obviously they'd be able to in the game, I'm not sure. But yep, so here I am building this on, putting it all over. Um, it doesn't quite line up perfectly, so I do just in the end have to wriggle things around slightly. Um, it, it takes the longest thing about these videos is definitely going through and selecting everything bit by bit. Um, so it does really help when it's sped up to times five. Um, but yeah, so here you go, I'm playing with some of the climbing frames. I decide I do use the pre-built ones just because to build them takes a lot of time um, to make them look really nice and good so I decided I do, do 
use some of the, um, the pre-built ones, which I think they still look really good. And for for the sake of doing it all myself, it would have taken probably 20, 30 minutes for me to build one that looks even half as good as those. Um, so for the sake of saving myself a lot of time, I just thought I'd do that. Um, and then yet yeah, here I am making it a sort of a, a sunken down enclosure just to make it a little bit more realistic. Um, you probably wouldn't have animals that can climb with a fence and obviously you can have unclimbable fences or but you would normally have a roof on it. Um, so having a sunk down enclosure with a lean over fence um, is what I end up doing. Um, although I believe I don't actually put the lean over on until I've realised that they can climb out off the wall. Um, well, of the slight slope. So yeah, I also have to just build in some of the star facilities just so that I can get everything in. So I build them all. Obviously I know I don't need the research centre or the um, the mechanics workshop because obviously they are they are they are um, in sandbox mode everything's unlocked. But I decided to build them in anyway. Um, I have a few issues with the path so I just think okay I'll just build the path out and then collect it all up. And then I hire some staff just to keep them all happy. Do a bit of staff zoning. Um, and then... Yes, I realise they're already trained up, which is very good. Um, so I just assign my staff to the correct, to the correct um, work zones. Build another staff room, as some of them are already complaining there's not enough room. Build a solar panel in just so they've got enough of power. And then after buying the lemurs, I put them into quarantine, I believe, although it doesn't matter I have yet. And yeah, again, having some issues with the the grouping and things like that. Um, in the end, I just take the hit and have a slight um, indent in the ground. I think it comes, yeah, it comes when I do that. So the only way to get around it is um, I found to have it have two separate parts, which I mean, it's fine. Um, just move that in a little bit because it's poking out. And now the guests come flooding in, even though they go the first time I was in. And yes, as I thought, I've got lots of lots of issues with that. So I just work on the paint for a second, and then get started on the um, barrier for the sort of the lean over barriers, I call it. I'm not actually sure what they actually are called, but for the sake of this, we'll just call it the lean over ones. and then I change it to a nice sort of dark green colour and then place out the whole way around. It takes a bit of time, especially in the corners. Um, I'm not sure if I exactly like what I have done in the corners, you'll see it in a second. It doesn't look that great, so I do think I might go back to that in the future and change that, but for the moment I'm happy with it. And the overall enclosure I'm really happy with. Um, as you'll see at the end of the video, there was a little uh, tour and talk through, um, as well as some issues. Um, where he found that the animals were escaping, so yeah, that wasn't great. Um, but yeah, you can see that works. So now here I am just trying to play with the corners. Um, trying to make them look nice. I tried to have a small bit in. Um, yeah, here I tried to add a tiny bit in to make it work. Can't get it to fit, so I think I, so I think in the future I might come back and add something in. But um, for this, I just have the two ones going over. Yeah, you'll see here crossing over each other to make sure there's no gaps, which I don't think looks awful, but um, I do think it could be better. And then I try and get the train working here because it's not being very great, it's not being very cooperative. Um, and in the end, I just about figure it out, get rid of some of the long grass again, check the they can't escape and they can't so leave it as that put the path around the side and then to stop the guests from getting too upset about this I added in some of the barriers um, just to make sure that they don't walk down that area 
and then sink that into the ground slightly just so it's hidden. Um, I then add in a couple more types of Nema. So the red puffs and the red rough sorry and the um, I can't remember what they're called now. But yeah, the um, striped tail ones. <laughs> I changed that round just so it adds a bit more privacy to it because before they wouldn't have actually had any privacy from it. So I just put these walls in to make it so they've got a bit more privacy. Although actually saying that, I've removed it so they probably would have less, less privacy than they did before. So yeah, I'm just adding in some foliage and some rock works just to make it look a little bit more natural for them. Um, obviously, palm trees you can get growing in the UK. Um, with a lot of care and attention. This tree I'm adding in now, I'm not sure if you can, but I just, I really liked it, so I put it in. I think, to be honest, you can grow most most things in the UK with enough care and attention, so hopefully that will be fine. So now I'm just adding in some um, information points for the guests, for the, the education points, sorry. So obviously we've got We've got three types of lemurs, so I put one in for each of them, and then I also add in one just for the um, the red and black, because the black and white, sorry, not the red and black, the black and white lemurs, because I believe they're the only ones which are critically endangered. Um, could be wrong on that, so I do do look if I am. But yep, so I leave them in there, and again, the issue with the bar thing, so something isn't quite right with this layer of the zoo. But yeah, so yeah, they've got lots of area where they can walk around and climb. Um, and then I thought I had it all sorted and we had a lemur escape. So you'll see in the sort of the walkthrough, it's not really a walkthrough, it's a bit of a walkthrough, but then also quite a lot of um, rebuilding and things. I do close the zoo just to get rid of the guests. Um, not that it works, they stay in here for a while. But yeah, so I'm just adding in some food, um, some water and some enrichment for them. Obviously they've got a lot of enrichment from the climbing, but not quite, it's not, not necessarily enough for them, so I do add a little bit more in. Um, and now we've got some six very happy lemurs, and I think they're already um, breeding, so that's very good. So yeah, just adding some bins and the benches again, I wanted to stick with the theme that we had earlier. Um, by the entrance, just a nice few views, that would be a lovely place to sit and look into the lemurs. So yeah, I'm just checking from a guest point of view what they can actually see. Um, and it's just about enough. So anyway, that's enough from me and I'll put you into the real time. And here we have the lemur exhibit finished now. Um, I might add a tiny bit of water in at some point, but I'm not sure. But here we go. So lots of climbing frames. Um, I have used the built-in game ones um, because there's just there's no way I'm making anything as good as they have. Um, so that's the simple reason to it. I've got a fair bit of rocks in there. I would add some more foliage in there eventually, um, but for the moment I'm just leaving it there to see. Basically, just want to check that they don't keep escaping. But yeah, then this we've got all three types. We've got the black and white. The ring-tailed and the red lemurs. I think they're just called the red lemurs, aren't they? Red rough lemurs, yeah. So we've got all of those in. Um, we've got a nice little indoor climbing area for them. Um, oh. Yeah, so we've got a nice indoor climbing area for them. Um, and then a small little indoor area, bedding area for them, which is the access to the keepers. So they can get in and out of there, um, which attaches onto here. So they can get in, so they've got an indoor area and an outdoor area. Um, the guests need to love them, the zoo is shut and they're still hanging around, so they're clearly enjoying it. And then yes, um, as I mentioned, it makes more sense to have a little keepers area right next to each of the exhibits. Um, so that they can get in, prepare the vegetables, as you can see here, he's prepping up all the veg. And he'll go and feed them when they're ready. So yeah, um, some lovely views from up here. You can see them all playing around. It might be a slightly too deep, thinking about it. Um, it could be slightly too deep, but um, hello, buddy. How have you got up there then? So you can get up all of this, I see. I didn't check that. 
Well, um, just before we finish then, I will quickly sort this out. So I think it's going to be a matter of moving these rocks down. Just moving them all down. Um, and then these ones here as well. Let's check that. Yeah, they've escaped. Okay, I think that's the escape tunnel. So let's check this guy. This guy can't get out. This guy can't get out. This guy can't get out. Okay, none of them can get out. So I think that's all of it done. But yeah, I think that should be all of it. So let's just quickly get the vet on them. Um, it's saying they've escaped, but they're still in there, so I'm not sure what that means. I'll call the vet to him. There you go. Oh, and he's come and destroyed a bin. Lovely. Thank you very much. Space, so yeah. Okay, well, I think we're going to have to send you to storage, and then bring you back in here as you decided to break away <laughs> uh, underpriced wow so they think it's underpriced and all I've got so far is one exhibit but can't complain with that um, but yeah I do really like this build um, it's similar to a zoo near where I'm from you come in you've got it's not quite Lima it's not Lima's but it's something like it uh, low welfare why have you got low welfare Temperature, and it was too cold. Oh, in June, you're too cold in June. It's snowing in June. Um, yeah, it's snowing in June. So this is why I've got the little indoor area. So we will add in, we'll add these in, in here. And one in here as well. Um, right, what temperature you set at? You'll set at 30, so what temperature range do you guys want? See, this is the issue. This is why it's all, um, I just wanted to play around. So, it needs more short grass. Okay, brilliant. God, these guys are difficult, aren't they? Um, where do I see? Zoopedia, temperature range 14 to 42, so we'll set these to 20. We'll set all these to 20 and hope that that's enough to keep them happy in the snowy but then when it's not snowy they've got all of that area outdoors to go to yeah they've got water they've got everything in here so now I will just sink these down um, slightly so they're no longer sticking out just do it so they're slightly stuck out. No, I won't do that because that looks awful. I'll do them so they're hidden. And hope that that still works. Low welfare. Yeah, well that's because you're sitting out here outside. And you've got protesters. Nice. Well, if you come inside like the rest of your guys, they're nice and happy. Oh, bless me. <laughs> Sorry. But yes, okay. Well, there we go. Look, looks lovely with the snow around. Filling up half the enclosure, but this little indoor area, nice and warm for them. So yes, that will we'll leave this episode here. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, bye-bye.